Hey guys, Aston101 back at it once again with a brand new video for you, and welcome to episode 4 of my F1 2013 series, the online racer, multiplayer online gameplay featuring real life F1 topics worth talking about. This is another race from uh, a lobby I was in the other day with, with guys like Ryan 83 into the barrier, Luke Spring from Cody's, a couple of other guys in there as well. Uh, real, a lot of fun, um, check those guys' channels out in the description below. Uh, when you get a chance. I um, had a lot of fun with that. So there's, there's, there's a couple more of these um, saved up to use as gameplay, so, so which is always convenient. Also, I'm going to be running a lot more open lobbies in future reference, so keep your eyes out for that on Twitter and Facebook and things like that. So if you haven't, follow me on Twitter. The link's at the end of the video. And uh, yeah, you can, be, you can be right up to date to anything video related with me and any other stuff. Be warned, I tweet a lot. Anywho, one more thing I want to ask before I start talking. Lewis Hamilton. I know a lot of you guys, I think three or four of you guys, really seem to jump down my throat for saying that I thought it was Pastor's, I didn't think it was Pastor's fault um, for the Hamilton incident at um, Valencia 2012 last season. To clarify, I didn't put all the blame on Hamilton. Again, I may have not mentioned that in the video, but I said it was 60 40 in favour of Hamilton. I think Hamilton gave Pastor no room, but I also think Pastor was somewhat responsible for coming back onto the track. It didn't help that Hamilton parked his car on the left-hand side of the, of the track for the left-hand part of the chicane when he didn't need to, and that's not the race in line. So he gave Pastor two choices, hit him or cut the corner and live to fight another day. Don't get me wrong, stupid call from Pastor on, on that one. However, Hamilton parking the car in an awkward place probably didn't help. Give the guys, give the guy the space he deserves. Anywho, now we've got that out of the way. Oh, one more thing I want to mention as well. Guys, it's okay to disagree with me with these certain things, but don't take it to another level by being rude. I know some people took it to my Ask FM box and started questioning my way of thinking. And one other guy said, oh, it's, it's like, it's like saying Hitler was a Jew. Shut up. <laughs> You're comparing one racing incident to or my opinion on a racing incident to a guy that killed six million Jews. Shut up. All right, anyway, as I was saying, let's talk about Ross Braun. Um, it turned out a couple of days ago, and the, and the news came through, that uh, Ross Braun will be leaving the Mercedes team at the end of the season. Uh, reason seems to be that, um, that uh, he's had disagreements with the board of directors and the board at Mercedes. Um, about about his role within the team, which is interesting. Um, seems to be a bit of a power struggle going on at Mercedes. I think they're, I think they're doing a bit of a handover process right now. Uh, for probably, um, I think it's gonna be Paddy Lowe that's probably gonna take over as team principal. Um, which is gonna be interesting to see how that one turns out as well. But people are gonna be wondering now, what's next for Ross Braun? And that's gonna be something that's definitely worth speculating and talking about. I mean. What about Mercedes? What happens next to Mercedes? And now, I'll say this: I think um, Paddy Lowe is, is 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 a decent dude for the team. He's he spent a lot of time in the McLaren branch. I think he's been with them for over ten years or so, and he spent a lot of time with. I think he spent most of his time at McLaren. He yeah, he was uh, he joined McLaren in '93 um, after being at, after spending seven years at Williams. So in other words. Paddy Lowe's been in the sport for about 25 years, so he definitely has a lot of experience. He's he's worked his way up through the research and development game. Um, he's been a chief engineer, a technical officer, and now he jumped over to Mercedes in 2013 as part of like Mercedes' campaign to try and put together a dream team of backroom staff. You know, they got Nicky Lauda. They, you know, they they brought in you know obviously had Ross Braun already as part of the team. You know, they got the elite driver they were desperately craved in Lewis Hamilton to replace. Michael Schumacher, you know, and a, a lot of guys in the backroom staff that had worked with previous championship winning teams like uh, Renault in uh, 05 and 06 yeah. and Ferrari from before then, they were trying to put together this really tight unit and it seems to be working and I know a lot of people like Lewis Hamilton's come out and said that um, he thinks Mercedes will still be a strong unit without Ross Braun next year. I half agree. Uh, I, I I mean, they still got a really good unit, but Ross Braun is a genius. He is a really, really great dude for a Formula One team. 
And you don't need me to run you down his credentials. But people that know the sport and have been watching for a long time know just what this man has achieved in Formula One. And, you know, he's done everything. You know, he's, there's not much more he could do anyway if he even wanted to. I mean, he's been around since 89 in Formula One, joined Benetton in 91, won two World... I mean, two... Um, Worked on the constructors for them in 95. Already had two drivers titles with Schumacher in 94 and 95. Then jumped with then, then jumped with Schumacher to Ferrari in 97, um, and then eventually got it to the constructors in 99, and then won six constructors titles in a row with Ferrari. I don't think that feat is gonna is gonna be beaten for at least a, three years with Red Bull, even though I mean the rules are changing around and whatnot next year. But that's gonna take that's gonna take some doing to dominate and have the the, the best car in Formula One for six years running especially in a sport where the rules are constantly changing year to year that's incredibly impressive and obviously along with that Michael Schumacher won his five drivers championships in you know in that run as well um, he, he took a year out at the end of that run in 06 and um, so took 2007 off to spend more time with the family then joined Honda in 2008 um, apparently there was a rumor going around at the time that he might join Red Bull um, to try and get Fernando Alonso to join them as well into uh, into like that that kind of end of 2007 season rumor mill. I remember that flying around the papers and things like that, saying that Red Bull was trying to put together their own dream team unit. You know, to get they already had Adrian Newey. They were going to try and bring in Ross Braun as well. Imagine those two together in the same team. That's a very scary thought. Um, but yeah, he he joined Honda in 2008, started working with the team, and. Uh, you know, uh, obviously, as we know, Honda pulled out of the sport at the end of the 2008 season. Um, the, you know, the team said he had a race-winning car, uh, for, and, and he, he felt really disappointed that his, his, his team was apparently, you know, falling apart like that. So he decided to get a consortium together, and you know, and, and bought and bought the team himself. And as you now know, we had what we like to call the rise and fall of Braun GP in 2009, which. As a Formula 1 fan back then, I, I never saw it coming with Braun GP coming along with this, this white and fluorescent yellow, like the highlight of fluid yellow, like pen colour. And, you know, and this, this sudden Braun GP in the formation of a team, you know, Jensen Button and Rubens Barrichello was kept on as drivers. And just this team that, that Ross Braun had put together and saved, all of a sudden was now a team that won the drivers and constructors double in 2009. Yeah, they lost a lot of steam towards the end of the second half of that season, where Red Bull started to come to the f come to fruition as a top runner in Formula One with you know, Sebastian Vettel, Mark Webber, you know, Vettel being the runner-up that season. People, many people forget that. You know, he's mentioned he's a four-time champion. He's also a he's a, also a runner-up in 08, as, 09, sorry, as well. And um, you know, um, you know he, he got Richard Branson to invest in the team, and we're all, all of a sudden with this dominant unit for a year and then Braun all of a sudden sells the team to Mercedes the next year it's like oh my god Mercedes are back in 2010 and you know they sold it to a, to a Mercedes in a 110 million pound deal Ross Braun m must have made a huge profit on that investment more than likely um, you know to buy that team out and and then sell it on make a profit and keep your job as team principal Hell yeah! Ryan, what a dude, doing? Ross Braun. What a dude. And of course, we now have the Mercedes team today. They, they, they've, they've inched their way up, and I think they've gotten probably better every year. I know 2012 wasn't a particularly strong year, especially in terms of reliability. But now, looking at that Mercedes unit, it's a very strong unit, and they're going to have you know fresh Mercedes top tier engines next season, which rumours are a hundred brake horsepower more powerful than the other cars that are coming in as V6s next season. If that's the case, they're going to have a huge advantage. And, um, you know, with Lewis Hamilton on board and Nico Rosberg, two top-tier level drivers already with the team, even if they lose Ross Braun, I think they'll still do very well. I think Paddy Lowe's probably going to take over. I think he'll do an excellent job in charge of that team. He knows what he's doing for sure. And, you know, they have a lot of guys back there that know what they're doing. And even so, they still have two, you know, one elite driver, one borderline elite driver in Rosberg. And as long as the car is half decent and works properly, there's no reason why they can't dominate. What's interesting now is what's going to happen next. Like, like what happens now? Like, 
d d oh, does you, Ross Braun want to yeah. call it a day? You know, retire from, you know, in, his, in his illustrious career in Formula One. I mean, the guy's done s and achieved so much. I mean, I I'm counting what seven construct, uh, eight constructors championships he's run while in charge of a team. And I know he's gonna be, he's gonna be moving on from Mercedes, which is gonna be interesting. I mean, do you go to Williams? Maybe. I mean, that one's been talked about a lot about you know uh, Ross Braun going to Williams as maybe as a new te te technical director you know, because again, the guy is still a ridiculously skilled engineer. After all, that's his that's his greatest strength. Despite he was a you know him being also a master strategist when he was in charge at Ferrari, but. Williams, you know, um, a new Williams team with him, Rob Smedley and Felipe Massa as a package all going to Williams no, could make that team very strong shot. next year. You've got an experienced guy in Felipe, you, you know, hopefully a better car that Ross Braun could put money into and make the team better in that sense. And Rob Smedley is one of the best race engineers in the paddock as well. So that could be a really great package. Um, also hearing talk about possibly going to McLaren um, to hook up with Whitmarsh and you know I know he's he spent time down there before now and again but that's also a because you know he's, he's, still he's worked with Honda before so it kind of makes sense of McLaren transitioning to Honda power in 2015 so Ross Braun could easily go back down there but the issue I have with that is that where would he fit in uh, because they already have their team principal in Martin Whitmarsh, and that would probably be a bit of a come down for Ross Braun to have, for him being a former principal to now probably being a technical officer or a technical director, like an Adrian Newey, for example. Um, would he be able to take coming down in job role? I don't think McLaren are going to get rid of Whitmarsh anytime soon. I don't think Whitmarsh has shown any, any desire to move on from his, from his current career. So. That's also an interesting one as well, but um, I'm not sure on this one what's going to happen, or maybe Braun will just decide to call it a day and retire on what's, what's been a pretty illustrious, you know, 25 years or so in Formula 1. Guy's 58 years old, um, he's, he's going to be 59 by the time the season ends, I mean, he may just want to sit down, you know, sit on his net worth of about 100 million quid and call it a day, <laughs> which quite frankly, I, I, I don't blame him if, if that's the case, <laughs> with that kind of money, but again, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say on this one, as always, um, what do you think of Ross Braun's career in Formula 1, do you think there's one one last run in him, because maybe he saw the Honda project, turn it into Braun GP, and he might think, hmm, maybe I can try that with, with Williams too and you know to see what could happen down there or does he call it a day um, I'd love to hear what you guys think any theories you guys come up with you guys are always good for that kind of thing so yeah let me know what you guys have to say hope you guys enjoyed the video I've been Harrison 101 I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you guys next time sayonara